Hello and welcome to Asian Voices. I'm your host, Kathleen Choi. On today's show, we'll explore the ancient and sometimes taboo art of tattooing that has been around for thousands of years in Asian cultures, including India, Polynesia, Japan, and China. Forms of tattooing have evolved into very distinct styles and over the last few centuries have become popular across the world. We will discover some distinct forms of tattooing by visiting the artists who are dedicated to preserving this ancient body art and form of expression. Did you know one of the oldest art forms is the tattoo? In Asia, tattoos have been around for thousands of years. First discovered in Japan on clay figurines dating back to 3000 BC. While some tattoos were used for religious and spiritual purposes, others signified a rite of passage or a way to connect with cultural heritage and self-identity. Let's take a look at the history behind tattooing from the ancient worlds to the present day in Asia and the Pacific Islands. Tattoos date back many thousands of years. From all the corners of the world, tattoos have been created for different reasons in many cultures. While some were used for religious and spiritual purposes, for others, they signified a rite of passage or a way to connect with their cultural heritage and self-identity. Today, we will learn the history of tattooing from the ancient world of Egypt to the present days of Asia and Pacific Islands. From the ancient world, there is very little documentation and evidence of the practice of tattooing. One of the strongest examples of tattoos have been found on mummies in ancient Egypt, where modern technology such as CT scans and infrared MRIs allowed scientists to find traces of tattoos or forms of body modifications on mummified corpses. The discovery of tattooed human skin to date is found on the body of Otzi the Iceman, found in the Austral Alps on the borders of Italy and Austria. Researchers have identified 61 tattoos on this 5,300-year-old mummy, incredibly preserved by the glacial climate. A thorough scan of this Iceman's mummified body determined that his tattoos served a medical purpose to treat his joint, spine degeneration, and possible chest pains. One of the oldest techniques of tattooing is tibori, a hand carving technique that is traced back to the 17th century during Japan's Edo period. The word tibori means hand carving and the name is known to derive from the influence of the ancient woodblock carving technique. In the 19th century, the technique was appropriated by the Yakuza, which became a rite of passage. It's usually a personal depiction of a scene from the Yakuza member's life or something symbolically important to them, showing the attributes that person is known for. Unlike the machine technique where the color starts to fade after a few years, the Tibori tattoos only get brighter and more vibrant over the years.
Although tattoos are still considered socially taboo in Japan, associated with the Yakuza and the criminal underworld, there has been a rapid increase of Tokyo's next generation of youth who are proudly tattooing their bodies and displaying them in public, bringing the Tokyo underground tattoo culture to the foreground. While tattoos are considered taboo in most Asian countries, in Thailand, they are socially accepted. Many people travel to Thailand to get the unique Thai tattoos, known as yantra tattooing or sakyan, typically performed by Buddhist monks within a Thai temple. Sakyan is an artistic style that uses yantra, a geometric design inscribed with Buddhist psalms and prayers to engrave the tattoos onto the skin using a hand-tapped method. Traditionally, this was done by using a long metal spike or sharpened bamboo stick dipped in ink, which has been replaced by a long and sharp steel needle. Those with sakyant tattoos are believed to be protected from bad curses, ghosts, and evil spirit. Tattoo masters who place sakyant tattoos require years of training to truly understand religious symbolism and to accurately create sakyant talisman. Polynesian tattoos are part of a wide genre of tattoo styles that span over many islands in the Pacific. Known as tatau in Samoa and tattoo in Tahiti, Polynesian tattoos are known for their distinctive patterns and motifs and a strong history. Each culture uses unique tools, pigments, and manners of tattooing, including special traditions or rules associated with each group. It's a common belief that the word tattoo in the English language comes from the word tatua, which is said to originate from the tapping sounds of the tool made during the process. The ceremony that is conducted at the end of tatua is called sama, where the tattooing is completed and the person receiving it is blessed. Welcome back. Civilizations from around the world have practiced the art of hand tap tattooing for thousands of years, which continues to live on in the Pacific region's indigenous cultures such as Samoa, Borneo, and the Philippines. Let's meet Manong Lane Wilkin, a Filipino American with over three decades of experience as a cultural hand tap tattoo practitioner and scholar who shares his personal journey in becoming an advocate for his ancestral Filipino hand tap tattooing, also known as Batok. I'm a hand tap tattoo practitioner. I have lineage from England, Scandinavia on my father's side, and primarily Ilocano on my mother's side with some ethnic minorities commonly known as Igorot as well. I became interested in hand tap tattooing when I was 19 years old living in Hawaii, and after seeing the beautiful markings of our Polynesian cousins, I wanted to have my own markings but did not want to appropriate something from another culture. And so that began my 30 plus years of research into our cultural practice of tattooing in the Philippines, which is now unfortunately largely extinct, except for a few ethnic groups in, throughout the Philippines. My, my mentors are uh, Sua Aleava'a, or sometimes known as Patelo Suluape, and Sua Kione Nunes of Hawaii. And uh, those were my teachers to help me, guide me through this practice. I never wanted to tattoo other people, just receive marks for myself. But the community, after realizing that I had all this background knowledge as well as the mentorship of people that are considered masters, the community began asking me for hand tap tattooing and I've done my best to take care of the Filipino American community with this practice. Hand tap tattooing is a little different from the machine. It is a little more intimate, I feel. The materials that we use to construct our tools are all natural materials, wood, bone, horn. Uh, these are some of the tattooing tools that I use that are called various forms of kisi, igahisi. Uh, this is one of the other tools that we use. Uh, 
not commonly seen. This is Igahisi from up north. It is a wonderful, beautiful tool. Very, very simple looking, but actually quite genius. And this is what we do to when we tattoo. The sounds are rhythmic, they're almost drum-like. The recipient receives uh, an experience that is very similar to what our ancestors had hundreds if not thousands of years ago. One of my friends, Sua Isaiah Toitu'u, who is of Tongan Hawaiian and Filipino descent, he says that tatao or tattooing is one of the things that shows the Western world that we have not been fully colonized. And so many people come to us for the part of their processing of decolonization from Western ideology and thought. Uh, this is a way of reclaiming the body and bringing it back into a, a cultural lens, focused and establishes who we are, uh, strengthens our sense of cultural self-worth and identity. Prior to receiving marks from me, the recipient has to follow protocols, both spiritual and practical. One thing that we do require of a lot of people is to do their genealogy. If they come from a metro place like Manila, that's a cosmopolitan melting pot. And we want to make sure that we give them the appropriate marks for their ethnic group. Uh, just because the family has been there for you know a few generations in Manila doesn't necessarily mean that they're Tagalog, they might be uh, they might be Ilocano, they might be Isno, they might be something else. And so we want to make sure that they do their due diligence and we do our due diligence with them. The designs that I use are culturally prescribed, if you will. The recipient doesn't really get a choice in what they can have in terms of those designs because that was already chosen by their ancestors generations upon generations ago. Cultural context as well as what designs are available to them from their ethnic group, that all comes into play. And unfortunately, our people are still illiterate in these designs. That's where it comes upon my shoulders to be able to be literate in the designs and do what is appropriate for that recipient and their ancestry. A lot of the work that I do is to re-educate our people about this practice again. I have apprentices written two books on the subject, contributed to other books on the subject. I've been in documentaries, I've been on the news, I've lectured at multiple universities and private forums, trying to bring this knowledge to the forefront again. Uh, something that was so important to our ancestors for thousands of years has now been lost to most Filipinos. And so it's a daunting task and, uh, and a heavy burden for those few practitioners that are left to bear. And I feel the weight of that burden. And so just by people watching this video or, or picking up a book and reading it, it helps bring that practice that much farther away from the precipice of cultural extinction again. When it comes to taking apprentices and students, I'm very careful about who I select. I don't just take anybody who is interested. They have to have a unique set of attributes to be able to do this work. They have to be craftsmen or craftswomen to be able to manufacture these handmade tools. A lot of people focus on the artistic aspect or the symbolic aspect of these markings, but what we have realized in recent years is that these markings often follow the meridian lines in the body as known by Chinese medicine. So in effect, it becomes like permanent acupuncture affecting a particular organ system. And we put this to the test, everything from pain management to fertility issues. And the results have been surprisingly uh, good. We have also participated in research studies where they're examining the connection between hand tap tattooing and an enhanced immune system that comes with tattooing itself, as well as these other aspects that seem to have an interplay with what is understood in Chinese medicine as acupuncture or acupressure. My admonition to my people out there is whatever you are interested in culturally, explore that practice. Because it, when you search for your ancestors, they find you and they fill in the gaps. And at its very base, Batok or cultural tattooing from the Philippines is to accentuate the relationship that a person has with not just the past as an abstract, but with their ancestors specifically. And so as you get to know your ancestors, you get to know this practice. 
I'm Lane Wilkin, and this is my voice. Specializing in the Polynesian style of tattoo art, Island Tat Evolve was founded by dedicated tattoo artists who have traveled throughout Polynesia, Asia, and North America to master the culture and meanings of tattoo motifs. Based on three pillars of technical mastery, artistic excellence, and storytelling, Island Tat Evolve has even been honored to be chosen as the official spiritual tattoo artist for the Ali Inui the king of Polynesia. I'm a tattoo artist. Been tattooing for a little over 20 years now. My family's from Guam. My dad was in the army and he got stationed out in Virginia and that's where I was born. I'd have to say that my dad inspired me to become a tattoo artist. I always loved to draw, but uh, when I came home from boot camp, he gave me a homemade tattoo machine. Uh, it had you know, a little motor, a guitar string. I didn't know anything about it, but he wanted me to finish a tattoo that he got when he was a kid and growing up in Guam. And it was unfinished. It was, it was the hand poke style he got in high school by some friends. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about what I was doing. I, I took the machine and I did what I could by finishing the tattoo. Uh, I, I went back to the Navy and made a couple more machines. And I ended up tattooing, you know, my, my roommates and everyone in the barracks. And that's how it all started. I was born and raised in Tonga, in the island of Wawao. I moved out here to California five years ago and I'm a tattoo artist here at Island Dance. My favorite design on Polynesian design is the spearhead or matai tau. Uh, the meaning of the, this design is like warrior and protection. I believe every single person is born to the world, they're born to be a warrior. The words to describe my artwork is tattoo tau, means strike equals or tattoo in Tongan language. Everybody have their own battle in life, physically and mentally. Um, and I like to include that in every tattoo I do because I believe that this design can help encourage you and encourage people so they know they are warriors and to keep fighting. Um, I was born on the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. I moved to San Diego, California at the age of three. I've been here ever since. A friend of mine inspired me to tattoo back in college. He saw me drawing during passing period one day and really persuaded me to look into tattooing. From there, 10 years later, I'm still doing what I love. The rest is just history. I specialize in custom freehand Polynesian tattoos. I also like to incorporate Filipino patterns and motifs in my work as well. What makes my work different from other artists, I would say, is my use of bold lines and bold framework with the smaller patterns and details in between. Y'all know how I teddy bear. Island Tat, Dub City Production in our area. Bless up! Island Tat has a flavor, spreading the fever, cheering the feeling. All together in the Indonesian style. In a positive vibe, yeah. In the Indonesian style. Come here together, get your gear up with the Ohio. We live a different life today, and we live in a different society with different tools. The Polynesian tattoo in the past uh, has been done for different reasons in different cultures. One word to describe my artwork would be mana, is the essence or, or power uh, in, in everything. I met Ali Nui Aleka Ipolani of the Polynesian Kingdom of Atui in 2011. A favorite tattoo design of mine would have to be uh, moko that I gave to Ali Nui, which is a facial tattoo. And since then, I've been able to make trips with him in the kingdom to New Zealand, Easter Island, um, Tahiti, throughout the Pacific. Uh, one thing that I would say uh, the kingdom of Atui signifies to me and the Polynesian community would be hope. That he will bring a voice and, and he'll, make, he'll make real change. Uh, not only for Hawaii, but for the people of Polynesia. 
I am Joshua Elsis. I am John Sambrio. I am Kidio Levailea. This, this is, is my, my voice. voice. This program was made possible in part by the California Arts Council, advancing California through the arts and creativity. Team Metro Real Estate, helping families with real estate investments in San Diego since 1990. Contact us today for your free in-home market valuation. Promote your organization or event online today on Asian Pacific Community Connection Business Directory website. Asian Voices was brought to you by Asian Culture and Media Alliance, empowering our Asian and Pacific Islander communities through media arts since 2013. Please support the only television program that creates a voice of real change. Asian Voices. Asian Voices. Asian Voices. Asian Voices. Asian Voices. Asian Voices. This is our voice. Well, that's all for today's show, but be sure to check out our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Before I go, I'll leave you with today's music video by a talented API music artist. I'm Kathleen Choi, and I'll see you next time on Asian Voices. Until then, take care everyone. Yeah.